I think this time we skip the hook. Skip the hook? Yeah, it'll be alright. Skip it. We can't skip the hook. Keeps everything connected together. Look, we don't really have time for this. Is it on? Yeah, we're back on. Go before we lose it again. Abandon an active directory. It's often the stated aim of organisations. Usually forms part of a wider cloud-first strategy. But what does it actually mean? Is your organisation ready for it? And if not, how can you put yourself on the right track to finally fulfil those cloud-first ambitions? Hopefully this can provide some useful information around the what, why and how of abandoning Active Directory. So a lot of organisations are already quite far along in this journey. They've spent years modernising IT, moving away from a traditional server infrastructure and as they get towards the end of this journey, they get to these Active Directory servers that have underpinned the environment for, for years, maybe even decades. Conversely, some are even at the beginning of the journey and knee deep in Windows servers and wondering where to start. Um, and it'd be, it can be quite daunting. So before we get too far into the topic, I think it'd be useful to maybe take a quick look at a typical scenario that most small and medium and even large enterprises will find themselves in. So we've got Active Directory. So as the name implies, it's a directory service. It's primarily responsible for identity and access management. And within that, you've got a number of things. One of them's users, and another one's computers and servers. Beyond being an identity provider, it can also do lots of other services such as DNS, group policy. Um, but for the purposes of comparing it to Enter ID, we'll just stick to users and computers for now. And then on the other side of things, we have Entra ID, or as it was formerly known, Azure Active Directory. And the same as with Active Directory, we've got users and we've got computers in here as well. In terms of the relationship between the two, it's pretty much a one-way sync from Active Directory to Enter ID. Now, I say one way, there are some items that you can sync backwards from Enter into Active Directory. So group right back, password uh, right back as well. But Primarily, it's a one-way relationship. Active Directory is the master. So a lot of organizations will find themselves with this sort of setup, and it's what we call a hybrid environment. So you're running both Active Directory and Enter ID. In terms of the difference between the two, um, you've got Active Directory. So runs what we call on-premise, although it's not necessarily on-premise, but it's essentially running on Windows servers in some kind of infrastructure. It can be virtual servers, it can be physical servers. Enter ID. It's cloud-based, lives in Azure, it's managed by Microsoft. There's no back-end infrastructure for you to look after. So what does it mean to abandon AD? Um, so you're an IT person, your organization's adopting a cloud-first strategy. The decision makers don't want these crusty old Active Directory servers around anymore, and you've been asked to get rid. On the face of it, seems simple. Decommission Active Directory, let Enter ID take care of everything. After all, it's a copy of AD running in the cloud, right? But as we'll see later, it's not quite that simple. So on to the why. First of all, no infrastructure or service to manage. Clearly there's um, the cost and effort involved in maintaining and managing that infrastructure. But as well as that, there's this kind of knowledge that goes with it. The traditional administrator role I feel is something that's um, being lost over time. There aren't as many people now with the necessary skills and knowledge to uh, to manage these environments. So there's a lot of uh, effort required in, in managing your own uh, Active Directory infrastructure, but as well as that, there's a, there's a knowledge required. Um, kind of today's administrators, um, it's harder to find people who have the necessary skills and experience in, in those sort of areas. The next reason be security, compliance, and governance. So in the beginning, you'd sync your AD to Enter ID or Azure Active Directory as it was known then, so that you could start to properly consume uh, Microsoft or Office 365 services. Uh, and, and that's how it started for most, most people. You know, you move from Exchange on-premise to Exchange online. And as time has gone on, the Microsoft Cloud ecosystem has, has grown and grown. 
and they've added lots of features and it's obviously become the focus for ongoing product development for, for Microsoft as opposed to on-premise. And as it's done for, for most software companies and providers, really. Um, Entry ID is included in that. Active Directory, not so much. It's almost now a weak link in your security posture. If you want to improve protection for on-prem systems or applications, you don't use features of Active Directory. You're often leveraging Entry ID and its superior security capabilities uh, by things like MPS, MFA extensions, or Entry ID application proxy and the like. Next, we have cost. So aside from licenses, which you'll likely already have, there's no real cost to utilize Enter ID. Um, whereas with traditional Active Directory, you have to pay for hardware, whether that's virtual or physical, um, server licenses, endpoint security, as well as the time for kind of management and maintenance of that environment. Lastly, we have availability and scalability. So with Enter ID, uh, there's no need to run multiple AD servers spanning geographic areas. Um, you don't have to worry about backing it up. You don't need to worry about disaster recovery. You don't have to worry about sync issues. So whether that's between two domain controllers or from Active Directory to Enter ID, um, it just becomes a single source of truth based in the cloud. It's a sin single entity. You don't have to worry about anything else. Um, if third parties need to integrate with your identity solution, you don't need to engineer ways to securely present it to them or maintain complicated on-premise federation solutions. Let's face it, in the same way, nobody wants to manage exchange servers nowadays. Nobody wants to be maintained in an ADFS setup anymore. But I think ultimately it's more than just a cost or time saving. It's what it represents. And that's effectively removing yourself from the shackles of traditional infrastructure and transition into a more modern cloud focused way of working. When it comes to how, here are some of the things that you might want to consider. First one, applications. I'd say it's probably the most important element. Uh, it's not uncommon at all to see organizations 95% of the way to achieving their cloud first dreams, only to realize that they'll be stuck having to maintain an active directory infrastructure uh, just to support a single line of business application, which they can't easily migrate away from. And there are a few different elements. So authentication is one. You've got Active Directory, which uses Kerberos or NTLM. It's a ticket-based authentication that takes place within a trusted local domain network. Um, Enter ID, on the other hand, uses modern auth, so OAuth, SAML, etc. Um, and that's token-based authentication. Um, some applications still rely on the older Active Directory-based authentication mechanisms. Another thing to think about is databases. So if your application uses SQL Server, uh, this may hold you back. Um, Enter ID authentication was introduced in SQL Server 2022, uh, but this may not always be appropriate. Files is another thing. So if your application needs storage for files, then chances are this will probably reside on a Windows file server. Now, there are other alternatives like Azure files, but these need hybrid identity to work effectively still. So if you're managing your own application infrastructure and your vendor doesn't have a SaaS offering, chances are you're gonna be reliant on Active Directory in some shape or form. Next, we have devices. So from what I've observed, organizations tend to have more success when they operate in a desktop, laptop, or remote device-centric fashion. Uh, in most cases, you can onboard them into Intune and perform device management that way, um, with them just being Enter ID joined. Um, users access applications directly from here, and as long as those apps are set up to work with Enter ID, you're okay. Things get complicated for organizations using centralized desktop virtualization, such as Citrix, RDS. Um, these often use infrastructure that's reliant on Active Directory, uh, and so this can become a, a major hurdle that might necessitate a migration away from those technologies in order to remove your reliance on it. Even something like Azure Virtual Desktop can be problematic. On the face of it, it might tick all the boxes. So the backend infrastructure, it's all managed by Microsoft. In Azure, there's no gateway brokers, no delivery controllers, web front ends to worry about. Um, if you're gonna use Windows 11 or 10 multi-session, then your licenses can be covered by your 365 um, subscriptions. And you can also join them to Enter ID and manage configuration and uh, applications via Intune. 
So there's no real reliance on group policy or anything else like that. So users are in enter ID and it looks fine on the face of it, but there are some important things that you need to take into account. So if you come over here with me, I'll show you what I mean. So here we've got the uh, Microsoft documentation around prerequisites for AVD or Azure Virtual Desktop. Um, some pretty kind of basic obvious ones at the top that we don't need to worry about. But if we move down into the uh, identity section, we can see here um, it lists some of the requirements around that, specifically where your users reside. So supported identity scenarios. So we've got a nice table here. We can see there's quite a few different uh, scenarios covered. So we've got Enter ID and ADDS. Um, Enter ID and Enter Domain Services. We'll cover domain services in a little bit more detail later on. Um, and then you can see at the bottom here, Microsoft Enter only. So I guess if you were looking to abandon Active Directory, that would be um, the one you were interested in. Um, so if you were to just go off that, okay, things aren't looking too bad. Potentially we can uh, we can run AVD with just Enter ID. However, there are a couple of uh, a couple of gotchas. First one being this here, so we can see where it says FS Logic Profile Container. So FS Logics, imagine a lot of people using AVD are going to be also utilizing. So it's profile management. And you can see, as it says here, to use FS Logic's profile container when joining your session host to Microsoft Enter ID, you need to store profiles on Azure files or Azure NetApp files, and your user accounts must be hybrid identities. So straight away, that's a problem. You're going to need to have your um, user accounts in a hybrid configuration, so Active Directory into Enter ID. So it kind of uh, kind of excludes being able to use FS Logics, which I imagine for most organizations using AVD is going to be a pretty big, um, pretty big deal breaker. So yeah, you really need proper profile management with a, a multi-session desktop. Um, you could look at personal desktops, uh, but this may not fit your business needs and can work out actually quite a lot more expensive. Um, you're not optimizing or streamlining resources. There is the option of um, Windows 365 business cloud PCs. Probably not suitable for medium or large enterprises, I'd say. Potentially also an issue because of cost, lack of scale uh, and flexibility. So there's a lack of networking options there. Uh, for example, if you've got private endpoints in your Azure PaaS, you won't be able to natively reach these from the, the 365 Business Cloud PCs. So now we move on to network config. So say so there's three main items here. It's VPN, file shares, and DNS. Um, with VPN, like many VPN solutions, use Active Directory for authentication. So this is also something that needs consideration. It's unusual nowadays for them not to support authentication methods outside of RADIUS, so things like SAML, um, but it's something to consider nonetheless. Uh, with file shares, as with applications, users need to access files, and in many instances, these are held on Windows file servers. Um, now, as we spoke about before, there are many more modern solutions available, um, and a lot of people will have already moved to things like that. So as well as Azure files, you've got OneDrive and SharePoint. If you haven't already made the jump, it's something that should be considered. And DNS, um, if you're using an Active Directory server for DNS resolution, uh, then this will need to be thought about. If you have moved everything to cloud, then you may be able to just get away with using public DNS resolution. Uh, but in some cases, you may want to control resolution of uh, private resources without maintaining a DNS server. Uh, for example, you have resources in Azure using private endpoints and you want to access them from on-premise devices over Express Route or VPN. Um, in a scenario like this, you could employ something like Azure Private DNS Forwarder. So you set your on-prem firewall or router up to conditionally forward requests to it. And the last one, and we spoke about it before, and that's Enter Domain Services. And this was formerly known as Azure AD DS. So depending on your requirements, this could be a solution. Uh, it's not a direct replacement for Active Directory, but if you want to get over the FS logics and Azure files hurdles, maybe throw in a little bit group policy as well for AVD, uh, it could be worth investigating. Um, it syncs from Enter ID, so it's not like Active Directory. Um, so that would stage your master source of truth. 
With that being said, although you don't need to manage Windows servers anymore, it still costs money as a service. Uh, and I know a lot of IT people aren't huge fans of it. Um, now that may be because they're trying to use it beyond its uh, intended scope. Uh, and it does have some limitations, but you may actually find it's easier to just maintain a small AD footprint to support applications or services that have a technical requirement for it. So as you've seen, a lot of this has revolved around existing hybrid environments. If you're lucky enough to be faced with a greenfield site, then you should almost always go down the Entra ID only route where possible. Um, otherwise, unless you're fortunate and you've operated your IT environment with a great deal of foresight over the years, um, chances are you'll have one or two things standing in your way of becoming completely free of Active Directory. Hopefully this has helped to highlight some of the things you need to consider. Well, I'm Chris, I'm a consultant at Synextra. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully this has helped to highlight some of the things that you need to consider when moving away from Active Directory.